Okay, we can start now. First of all, thank you for joining us today in our Ruby on Rails webinar. My name is Mariel. I am from Wiseline Academy. I work, I proudly work at Wiseline Academy. And today we have Mariel Nilo, Germán, eh, Omar, and Mar Sanchez. And they will be the lecturers and speakers today. We're very, very excited to have you here. And before beginning, I want to give a, a quick introduction on what, what is Wiseline, what we do at Wiseline and Wiseline Academy. Maybe some of you already know, maybe some of you work here, <laughs> maybe some of you want to work here someday. Um, but if, if you don't know, this is what Wiseline does. We are a software development company. Uh, we design services. First, first it was a product company, and now it is a services company, as well as a product company. And uh, we have engineering disciplines like SRE, QA, AI, mobile, and, and more engineering disciplines. And well, we work with different brands all over the world. Right now, I'm going to show you a map. But we work with different brands and companies such as Nat Geo, Fox, Washington Post, amongst others. So we are a really big company growing each time more and more. And we are looking for, for more people out there to join. This is our global presence, mostly in Mexico, Spain, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Colombia, Australia, and in, in more, more in other places soon. So we hope that, that you can someday join us and, and be interested in, in working with us or collaborating some other way. And at Wiseline Academy, what we want to do is help you guys to, to get more prepared in whichever area you want. If it's a soft skill, if it's a technical skill, if it's an, a language, uh, a type of engineering program that you want to that you wanna get better at. So that's what we focus at, at Wiseline Academy. We want to we wanna explore your skills. And that's why we are here today. And we're really, really happy to host you. So if you can follow us in our social media, follow us in our, in our website to stay tuned for the other courses that we're gonna have. We're gonna have more boot camps, courses, webinars, workshops, and, and get guest speakers. So it, it gets really exciting. We do a lot of events, so don't forget to follow us. And before starting, I wanna uh, leave you with some really important notes. Uh, first of all, please have your names available so we can refer to you if we have any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, so we can answer your questions. Keep your microphones in mute so that we don't get any interruptions. We will have all the questions in the chat and at the end we will have a Q&A section or the lecturers might respond to some of the questions during the webinar. And uh, please keep all the questions and the comments focused on this topic, on, on Ruby and the, on the webinar. And uh, if you want to have your cameras on or off, however you feel more comfortable. And well, I'm going to leave you with our experts. Thank you for being here today and enjoy. They're muted. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry it took me a while to, to, to find my, my, my screen. Thank you, everyone, to be, for being here. My name is, um, as you can see in my name below, is Herman Dominguez. Um, I'm a solutions architect here at Wiseline. Uh, I'm about to be two years in Wiseline now. Uh, joining me. Uh, and let me let me go back to the next. Join me. Join me is Mar Sanchez. Mar is a DevOps or site reliability engineer. It's a top word for Spanish-speaking people. And Omar Madrid, who is also a software engineer in in Wiseline. Um, they are we are together trying to teach you a little bit about our journey into Ruby on Rails. It's 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 a, it, it was a crazy journey. And let me go through all of it in like uh, one hour, I will tell you everything about it. So once upon a time, there was a, 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 a company named Wiseline that did foster innovation as part of the culture and as part of the, of the ideas. 
um, in this in innovation of culture, um, we have this innovation camp. Every every year we have at least once a year an uh, innovation event in, was, in which all of the all, all of us as wise liners are, are able to participate into solving complex problems, either problems for the in industry, problems for our own business, different types of problems. You can see you, you will have this presentation, you will have the recording at the end, and you will be able to see the blog post that we have for the uh, for the innovation camp in the life at WiseLine. In that innovation camp, there was this project that is called WiseSpace. This WiseSpace uh, project is a project that was participated in with Omar and Mar, in which we are trying to coordinate in a better way uh, when we go back to the offices to have uh, all the health and security relation, uh, regulations in, at hand in a streamlined process in which we will be able to attend the office in an orderly manner by, ask, by, by having uh, spaces uh, in, a, in a healthy way. And we also have a, a health questionnaire to, to do this. So this project, uh, in a, in a, in, in broadly speaking, uh, help us trying to leverage a current project that we had at WiseLine that is called MAPS. This project was built on Ruby on Rails. It's an amazing project that we are leveraging for doing this um, this solution for, for the WiseSpace uh, project. And then we realized it was on Ruby on Rails. And guess what? Nobody knew Ruby on Rails at this time. So we had to, to improvise and to try to, uh, to, to understand as much as we can of the of the whole process in order to leverage it and to provide the right solution to our internal teams and to our internal stakeholders but we had to we had to face different thoughts different uh phases of the problem and we started by working with the the, the, the maps the, the maps uh solution did a authentication via google maps and we at WiseLine have Okta as part of this authentication process that we have for a single sign-on and for different uh, solutions in the in the in the in the in the patterns. So we had to solve this, and we had to integrate our current Ruby on Rails application with the Okta uh, Okta provider, and we had to understand different things before going into the code. And that's why I'm here as a solutions architect trying to explain the complex parts of this of the solution i might fail and i'm sorry every time i fail not ex not being able to explain complicated stuff and making it more complicated so here i go i will make your life more complicated so the user authentication provides different complexities different anti-patterns and it's all based on trying to authenticate and authorize the user that's very clear. So now that we are in the same page, I will I will go to the next slide. It's just a kidding. It's just a, a, a joke. I'm sorry. Um, the, 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 the password anti-pattern is a security concern for um, for, for for authentication, in which a user uses their current password to authenticate uh, their current username and password and credentials to authenticate into another. Uh, into another social network. In the, in the case that we are seeing, we are seeing that I am using my Twitter account to authenticate and to create a user into my LinkedIn um, uh, social network. That represents an anti-pattern because I don't have separate accounts. I have all my accounts into, into, uh, 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 consolidated into a single, in, into a single um, connection. And if I lose my Twitter account, I am not able to connect to my to my LinkedIn. So probably more, uh, some of you have happened this when you lose one your Hotmail account. Probably somebody lost your lose their Hotmail account, and you are not able to get into your other social networks. So that is something the all out uh, uh, paradigm is trying to solve as we go. 
But before going into that, I want to, to, to make a, a, a statement on what is the difference between authentication and authorization. Does anyone want to take a shot in what's the difference between authentication and authorization? <laughs> Let's see how active is the audience today of their sleep before the, after the Independence Day. Do we have a volunteer, a value, uh, somebody who wants to, or, or I get to pick? Hey, I get to pick. I, I would like to, to give it a shot. Come on, Sinue, come on, let's give it a try. What is the difference between authentication and authorization? You can, you can use the faces of the lady below to inspire yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I believe that authentication is to, to reveal or to confirm that you are who you say you are. So it is the identity and the authorization is when you have the right or the premises, the currencies to access what you want to access. So that's the, that is the main difference. That is right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, for those who don't know Sinue, he's part of my team. No, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sinue. I wish. You are, I wish. <laughs> you are. You are very, very right. At authentication is answers the who are you question. It's a method to authenticate. To, to provide proof that you are who you claim you to be. And the authorization, as you are saying correctly, is the right to do something on a resource because you have the right to do it. It's, um, it's a precondition, uh, it's, it's a, a, a authorization should be preconditioned by authentication. But the, that's the only mean that you can be authorized to do something on a resource is by proving that you are whoever you say you are. I hope I have made everything confusing now, so I will go to more complex problems. So we found out that there are several technologies and several stacks around what we call security and to provide this authentication and authorizations methods. So we have OAuth, we have OpenID, and we have SAML. Probably you have heard at least one of these ones in, 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 in working with security, with authentication, and with passwords and, 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 and usernames. The first one I'm, I'm going to go into is the OAuth one. OAuth, it doesn't, it, 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 it's funny because OAuth, it doesn't do authorization. I, I, it, the, the name can be confusing a little bit, but OAuth is actually a delegation protocol a delegation protocol in which uh, this, uh, this protocol would delegate the, the authentication and the validation of the username of the password to other platform. For example, Google, for example, Facebook. If you have seen some, some applications, sometimes you get into an application and you say, okay, how are you going to authenticate? How are you going to prove that you are who you are? And we choose an, a previously uh, existing social network, such as LinkedIn, GitHub, um, Twitter, etc. So we use OAuth to delegate into Twitter, into LinkedIn, into GitHub, the process of authenticate and validate that we are who we are. Does that make sense? Am I, am I making myself clear? Um, it's just a part of the technology stack. And it's very, very used in the in, in this air in this time when we have uh, platforms which are high level of, of security, such as, as I'm saying Facebook and, and Twitter. On the other hand, we have OpenID. OpenID is an open standard that some organizations use to authenticate users. OpenID uh, is based specifically on websites to be able to, to create sign-in uh, accounts and logins in order to be able to authenticate. It doesn't rely on other platforms to, to generate the, the, the validation of the password, the validation of the hash, or any other, uh, or any other um, capabilities that uh, provides. Nevertheless, they can work together. They can work together to provide the authentication on one side for OAuth, which is outside the, of the platform. And on the other hand, with OpenID, we can um, authenticate using 
actual usernames and passwords in on all platform. Um, op open open ID is a as I was saying is an a, an open standard and every every everything that has this i this open ID icon is based on the same standard. Does that make sense? I mean, it, there's one is local. The open ID is local for you to manage your own passwords and your own uh, username and out you give that um, management to other platforms. And finally, SAML. SAML is an XML based standard for exchange for doing this exchange of authentication and credentials. As you may suppose, these credentials, when I press a a continue or I press uh, login, it, they don't fly on, 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 uh, on encrypted. They are encrypted and you have to provide a right way of exchanging these credentials for no one to be able to steal them, entering SAML. SAML relies on OpenID on, 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 on OAuth in order to be able to authenticate enterprise level. So we can exchange, it, exchange credentials, have different sources of passwords and of, of uh, emails and hence having everything integrated into a single place to be able to provide the same level of uh, of confidence for once and on the other the same rights to access the same resources to the same people having a, a, a we call it idempotent standards so idempotent means every time i do something the result will be the same if i authenticate with out I should be able to, uh, to access the same resource when I am authenticated with OpenID as well. So that's called idempotent. And on the other hand, is the integration of all these technologies into a single solution. I hope it, 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 it makes sense. And I will go now to talk a little bit about what our tech stack at this time is looking, at, is looking like. We this, this tech stack has been evolving from, for different parts of the white space uh, uh, life cycle. The, the project life cycle has been evolving. And right now for this demo, for this webinar, we have implemented Heroku as part of the solution to be able to put it into the cloud. We have, uh, we have different, different approaches. Mar will talk about, will talk about the different approaches that we took and the and the challenges that it represented because as you may know technology is not about all uh is not all, is not all about the the happy path there are different things that happen a lot and we have to suffer because we are technical guys and programmers so we are using ruby on rails rails ver uh, version 6 on this um on this solution we are, are also versioning our code with github as many of you uh, might, might, might know and finally we're deploying into heroku heroku is a cloud provider is a my in my personal point of view is the simplest of the uh cloud providers it's also a very way a very good way of learning the cloud as a platform as a service or uh, a little bit of ser and, uh, software as a service, you can use Heroku to create your own uh, applications. And it's a very good way to learn about the, the, the cloud if you don't know it uh, at this time. So without further, ah, and finally, I, I, I almost forgot my most important and most valuable slide of all. We at WiseLine always solve everything by collaborating, by having multidisciplinary teams in, and exchanging ideas to be able to solve the different kind of problems our customers face and our internal projects face as well. We are WiseLine and we try to solve everything in an agile way, trying to uh, have different people with different points of view to improve our diversity and inclusion to be able to have different views of our problem and to solve it every time that we have to, 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 to deliver results. So that's why we have a, a software engineer and a DevOps engineer also as part of this team. Actually, the team of Wispace is like 20 people, but uh, we couldn't put a, a webinar of 20 people, so we have to put it for three only. 
And that's it. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to, to pass the hand to my dear friend Omar, who is going to talk, to talk about a little bit of the code. He will show, you, show us his, probably his thought process on how he learned uh, Ruby on Rails, probably, and see, let's see how it goes. And thank you, Omar. I will uh, stop sharing so you can, uh, or you want me to share these two slides first? No, no, it's okay. I can. Okay. So, hello everyone. As Carmen said, uh, I am Omar. Uh, I am a software engineer here at, at Wasteland. And uh, like one month ago, I really, 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 really uh, don't know any anything about Ruby and Rails. <laughs> uh, but this was a, a journey for me. And right now I, I'm, I am learning uh, with this webinar. So this is very excited for me, exciting for me, sorry. Uh, and I am kind of nervous because this is my first webinar. So if you uh, uh, see me like nervous, you can clap me like, ooh, you can do it then. <laughs> uh, okay, so her, as Herman said, uh, Thank you. You, you really rock, guys. <laughs> um, well, so as Herman was saying, we have to learn how we will imp implement the OAuth flow. Uh, this why this is because uh, Wiseland Maps use uh, another an authorization from Google. And we need to integrate Okta because this is our institutional um, strategy of uh, author uh, authentication. So the way that OAuth works is that it's like this: uh, a user resource, use a mobile mobile or cloud app as a client, and go to the OAuth. And go to the OAuth uh, strategy um, to get the information of the user. Um, the first thing that the OAuth uh, question to the user is the username and password. That in this case uh, will send or uh, the Okta form. So we use our credentials from Okta uh, to to authenticate. And OAuth is the way that that we will know if we have access of we are who we say that we are. So if 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 all that's good, uh, OAuth will say, "Yeah, come on, let's let's uh, let's play." So if we want to uh, to be more clear, we we are going to see the code the essential part of the implementation in Ruby. Um, and this, start, this starts with the gems. We need uh, at least five gems to implement this st strategy. Uh, we need the Omni out, Okta O out, that this is the strategy that Okta uses. Um, the active record session store to persist the session, uh, Figaro, uh, like the song, <laughs> uh, to create the application YAML that will store the secrets device that is the scaffolding of the applications and helps to create the model uh, of the of the database and all of that, and the Opti Omni Out Rails CSRF protection that is. Uh, some vulnerability that Okta have, has uh, have had in the in the past. So this so these gems <laughs> have that. Okay, let's see the code. At first, we have to uh, to put the gems on our gem file and execute uh, bundle install. So these gems will be used in the project. I, I will uh, initialize the project. It's a sample project that Okta helped us to, 
to make uh, uh, with his documentation uh, i only uh, go to the octa page and see what the recommendation of octa so if we go to my local host uh, I, I am already logging. <laughs> Sorry. Local host. Oh, man. Well, I will open a new incognito mode because I have my credentials <laughs> already in the. So. Can we see your password just to have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we don't have to see your password, remember. Uh, okay. It's security, <laughs> but so it's a fake a... password. Uh, we are in the in the in a local host environment, so I will not use my real password. That is actually password one two three, <laughs> but uh, it's a joke. So can, can can you zoom a little bit so we can see better the the code, Omar? Please. Uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, just a second. Um, it's like how about now you can see well cool. so uh, we have this application uh, sample application that the only thing that it does uh, is uh sign in via octa using our octa uh, credentials in this case i use my my wasteland account and a fake password, as you see. <laughs> so the the other thing that do this application is uh, give me my uh, username of Octa, and we can log out, and that's that's it. It's only a simple application. So uh, for we can do this, we have to be uh, we have to create an organization into Octa that we can see if we use the Octa CLI. When we, when we create this project, we need the Octa CLI, that is Octa. And we have to log in. If we do Octa login, uh, if we have already an organization config configured, uh, we will have the name. But if we don't have this organization, uh, we'll send us to a register form to to do all the of that stuff to have one dashboard like this one or yeah like this one here we have all our organization in, uh, in octa where we can uh, manage the users the accesses and every and every that stuff so we have to create an application to uh, to connect uh, to connect this with Octa, and we we uh, here I have the application that I create that is Octa Root, uh, and this is my plugin ID. And right here we can do a lot of uh, set we can set a lot of settings uh, and get the client secret and some secrets that we will need uh, in the process uh, as the uh, redirect URLs and sign out URLs that this is my local host in this case. If we have a production uh, application, we can set here the redirections and all that stuff. So, okay, this is uh, the first thing that we have to do is set these gems, do a bundle install, and then uh, we, we have to set uh, ready or local or or database. Uh, this database Octa, Octa needs to create some records in the database to identify the use the new users that log in into our application. So uh, here we have uh, the model, uh, the basic model of the of of the user with Octa that we only have to set the provider, the UID, and the email. Uh, this uh, these records will be automatically set with the Octa Omni output strategy. So we only have to define the, the, the model and create the control the Omni out controllers to set, set out this uh, 
the, this data. Uh, here we have the OVNI out callback controller, controller that will be hand, will handle the session and the insert in the database. Uh, so, so when we uh, get authenticated, we can set uh, the session as on, uh, if we can say it like that, and uh, have our credentials, well, no, no credentials, or, or data uh, in the database. Um, so uh, we have to set the, the, the controller to destroy the session when we log out. Uh, as we can see, when we log in, we will go to the root path. When we log out, we will go back to the root path. Uh, these paths are set in the routes uh, dot rb, where we get, we set the the callback of the opni out strategy, and uh, what what is our root page? In this case, is uh, our home. Um, okay, right on the application controller, we will uh, set the strategy if we are logging in where we are going to go. And um, if we are, we don't have a session, uh, an active session, what we will have to do. So this is the, the, the method that we use to do that. Um, okay, so as I said, <laughs> that, that, that uh, I have my password. <laughs> so this is an, an error of application, uh, but that's yeah, okay, it's a, it's a simple application. Uh, here we have to put our secrets uh, to to set uh, the connection of uh, with Okta. So this this is, this will create an, uh, environment variables that the the Okta environment the Ruby environment will take and send to to in the authentication flow. Uh, so here we, this is an git ignore uh, uh, file, so we can test it in local. Uh, if we deploy, we have to set these variables wherever we, we deploy. Um, so this will uh, be or dot end, as we can uh, say. And yeah, well, so the, if you can see, here we have the redirection URI, URI uh, that we have the set in our application dashboard. This is important because if we have different things, Alta will be like, oh, you are doing something wrong, man. And uh, we'll set an, a lot of errors that will have us hours debugging and reading documentation, I think. So, uh, with all, only this configuration, we can set all the Octa strategy. That is kind of easy. Uh, this, this is one of the things that I like most of learning Ruby because uh, set and uh, always uh, I have a problem setting the authentication protocols in a lot of uh, different languages. I mostly work with JavaScript in Node. Uh, I don't say that it's very difficult, but it's always kind of confusing. I think uh, Ruby and Rails uh, make this a lot of PC. Using device, uh, we have to, we have a, a great scaffolding with a lot of models um, and we can initialize in the device RB all the, all the strategy settings that we need and this is the way that we linked the application YAML and the and the Okta strategy uh, configurations. So the first thing that the application do is go to the device RB and initialize all the things that we need uh, as this. We need uh, the Okta strategy, and we can in, and initialize all the all the values that we need and. And we only create the model, and we get we do Rails S, and we have uh, already set up our Octa uh, authentication method. 
So the next thing is deployed it, deploy this solution to production. And for that, we have our expert, Mark, that she did a great work always. So she can explain uh, better this, this thing. So hi, Mark. Hi, everyone. Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, we can see you. Nice. So first of all, contrary to Omar, I still don't know any Ruby or Rails. So I, I know enough to make the deployment work, but that's it. <laughs> so bear with me, please. Um, well, first, I want to tell you a little sad story about this project. <laughs> Well, I was uh, hoping to deploy this app with Elastic Stock and Terraform, but you started, I delete everything. <laughs> and instead of working in the, fish, in the finishing details of the project, I had to work on how to recover all the stuff I was working the, the last two weeks. So I decided, to change the platform to Heroku. Um, why? Because some of my coworkers know Heroku, how to deploy to Heroku, so they can help me. Um, and because I work once or twice a lot of years ago with Heroku and it was kind of easy to deploy there. So that's why I, I changed from AWS, Elastic Beanstalk AWS to Heroku. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Oh my God, you can see that. <laughs> okay. So first thing we, we learned with this project is we, we can use SQLite in any production platform. <laughs> um, yeah, this is in, the same in Elastic Beanstalk, the same in Heroku. We can install uh, SQLite for production. So uh, we are using Postgres SQL in production, SQLite in development, as you can see here. Right, and we are using Postgres. Oh my God, here is Postgres. Uh, let me, give me a moment. I want to change the position of the Zoom bar because it's kind of annoying. The, the, Zoom, the Zoom bar actually has two names. The first one is annoying and the second one is it's always in your in your pointer. So yes, <laughs> yes. I I don't know why some hasn't changed this already, but is what it is. So well, with Heroku, if you don't know Heroku, Heroku is a platform as a service. So we we have to do barely anything to deploy there, unfortunately. So first thing we need to do, I'm gonna show you where, 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 where. I'm gonna show you here. And then I'm gonna, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, there's nothing recorded. Everything is live. She's going programming on you guys no <laughs> no that 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 could be horrible because always in a like programming session something can fail so no <laughs> just i'm gonna show you the commands to create a, a heroku app and to deploy there so first thing yeah 
is to create a Heroku account. And then, yeah, I have it. So you can create it here in Heroku, heroku.com, I think. Yeah, dot com. Oh my God, so, so annoying me. You sign up and that's it. Then you are going to be asked in uh, to install the CLI. And this can be done with Homebrew. Brew install. There it is. Well, I think this is not showing. Okay, but is brew install Heroku and that's it. Then you have to log in uh, with Heroku login. That's it. This is going to open a browser or a page in your browser and you have to log in. If you are already logged in, just the, the page is going to tell you you are logging, go back to the CLA. And then in the root of the, your project, if you can see here, I'm in the root of this project. This is the, the material that we are gonna share with, with you guys uh, after the, 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 this webinar. Uh, guys and girls, well, Fox is, is Further. Um, okay, so here you have to execute Heroku create, and this is going to create another app. I'm going to do it because I, I know this is not going to change anything in my current application. So that's it. It's a new application created. I can see it here. I'm not going to use it. This is the new one because I already have one. So my application, my actual application is, I think is this one. Yeah, is this one. So how you can push to your new application in Heroku, if you see, and uh, this create a kind of uh, another repo in Heroku. So when you check here, your remotes in your uh, root repository, you can see there is a new remote called Heroku. Um, basically, that's it. So when you want to deploy your code the only thing first of all you need to push your code name and after that you need to push to heroku to the other remote that here when you execute heroku create uh, Heroku creates for you. Yeah. So once you do this, um, the Heroku app is going to be deployed and you can see all the stuff that is, is installing Heroku for you and uh, for you app to work. So I'm going to show you, I think there is something. Yeah, for example, here, I still have it. Um, this is what happened when I push to Heroku. They start to install the, the gems needed to, for the project. And then at the very end, It shows your URL, your repo, your application URL. So you can go there 
open it. Um, oh my God, it's a little slow, my connection. There is. So this is the project or current application. So I'm gonna try this and I think this should work. Hope so. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I can wait. Can we see your password as well? Oh my God. Sorry? I'm just messing with you. Oh my God. You always do. <laughs> okay. So I think I need to try to log in with my. Okay. I'm going to, because that is not nice. Oh my god. I think you, you need to be part of my organization to to log okay. in successful. So that's why you don't have this. Well, if I would be part of the or Omar's organization, I could log in. But um, as you can see, is pretty uh, easy to a kind of easy because we have, even with Heroku, we have some issues a little, but it was less. And I don't know what else to say you folks. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, maybe to be a good moment for that. Yeah, I guess I guess that we can start like uh, this, this will be a very a very precise moment, right? To start a QA. If you guys have any questions, we have here the expert, Mar Omar and Herman. I'm sure they will be happy to answer any questions that you have. So you can uh, as you can see, you can our start. final challenge was the uh, the actual demonstration of the difference between the authorization and authentication. Mar was out was was authorized or authenticate, but she was not authorized because she knows what she was not part of the of the uh, of Omar's uh, organization. So I see Diego with his hand raised. Um, go ahead, Diego. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really like the I have really liked the, all this conversation here. And I really liked as well the Heroku uh, deployment. And I was wondering if it's possible to get some kind of tutorial or something, because uh, actually I, I'm not so good with Heroku. I'm not good at all with Heroku, better said. And today in the morning, I was talking for exactly about that with a colleague of mine. So I would be really interested in a tutorial or something. Thank you very much. Um yeah, go ahead, Mar. You, you, you open okay. your mic, you, you answer the question. Okay, okay. So, well, we get, uh, we got a lot of help with uh, Joseph. Uh, I think he's here. Joseph help us with the deployment. And he has a lot of experience working with Heroku and with Elastic Beanstalk. So maybe he is this. And on, a, on the other hand, there's a, there's a maxima around automatization. The first part is that you are to be able to understand the manual process first, right? So in, in terms of this challenge that we are seeing right now with Ruby on Rails, my advice would be learn first the language that you are trying to program on like javascript or ruby whatever that's it and run the program first locally as omar was showing us that she did he did uh, locally the the test when you go when you uh, finish understanding the whole process locally try to move it into the cloud i would suggest going into the specific heroku tutorials for each of the languages and the different components that you are using in your technical stack. For example, 
I would go and first uh, see how to deploy a Ruby on Rails um, uh, application. Then I will, I will be able to connect, as uh, Carlos is saying, my uh, or application is tightly coupled with the Heroku, with the, with the GitHub, um, with the GitHub repo. So yes, in the in the implementation that Heroku has, that is the way, and it's simpler because it inter interlaces the uh, the version of the code with the actual deployment. It, it understands several languages and it's able to translate that. So. Yeah, I will go step by step, understanding each of the components of the tech stack and take advantage of them and eventually be able to automatize all the process from end to end in that model. Um, also, uh, Diego, uh, Heroku has uh, great documentation. I sent the devcenter.heroku.com. Uh, it had a lot, a lot of implementations in different um, languages as uh, Ruby and Rails, uh, Java, JavaScript Node. Uh, so I think you can get the tutorial that you need in that in the link. Thank you very much. I understood very well. Thank you, thank you. It was very nice lecture. Thanks. So we have another question from Aaron. Uh, it says, it sounds like Heroku is highly tied to your repository. Is there any specific access you need to give to Heroku for it to have access to your repository content? That Mark, uh, that that question can be answered by Mar. You want to take it, Mar? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it again? I was answering. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so it reads, it sounds like Heroku is highly tied to your repository. Oh, yeah, is there yeah. any specific access you need to give to Heroku for it to have access to your repository content? No, I, I already gave to Heroku access when I logged in. So that's it. Basically, that's it. You don't need to do anything. Just log in. And after that, here in your root repository, execute Heroku create, and that's it. You need to authenticate and have authorizations by GitHub. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, you need to, uh, to be able to access to the repository. Yeah, so, so it's a single, it's, it's a simple configuration, yeah. Yeah, it was be pretty, pretty straightforward. I didn't have to do a lot of it. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Aaron, for your question. Do we have any other question in, in the room? No, I think everything was clear. Actually, actually, I was waiting for 10 seconds to people be feel uncomfortable enough to ask questions. So, yeah, it's it's like a... So we had another one. Sinoe, yes. uh, he's asking also in the Okta, the new audience for the Heroku app should be added, right? Yeah, it's uh, actually in Heroku, in Heroku, in Okta, we should create all the users that are going to be authenticated and then uh, register it. So it can be a self-service, um, a self-service uh, feature, or uh, we can. Um, Okta has different capabilities, and we can uh, export and import a database of users into Okta to do a mass, a mass creation of the of the users. Cool. So, cool. Uh, do we have any other question? So, what do you, uh, Eduardo is asking, what do you recommend to a great Rails knowledge? I will go to the expert, my expert, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. Uh, try, uh, try to, to, 
practice as much as you can. Um, you know, um, programming is, 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 is an exercise or it's an exercise to, we have to, to keep on practicing in order to not to lose the muscle. And, and, and Ruby, Ruby, I will take uh, Sergio's question as well. Ruby is, is created with the programmer in mind. Uh, Ruby is, is said to be the best friend for all programmers since it's very, it's very, uh, the syntaxis is very, is very easy, is very similar to other languages out in there in the market. And also, uh, the, the is, is very, um, is declarative. So it helps you to have different ways of, of uh, creating the app by the knowledge you already have. And I, I don't think it's a, I, I don't believe it's a difficult learning curve if you be you come from another language. And we also at, at Westline Academy have a Ruby on Rails uh, book uh, course that we can um, take. And finally, um, I wanted to say as well that uh, one of the things that we use to practice languages is uh, this innovation uh, is innovation culture that we live in and we create actual problems to try to learn new things new technologies and, and new services we create these uh, problematics in, in inside in house to be able to solve them in a production manner uh, way <laughs> Yeah, so I, I am, I, uh, I am a, a, a new Ruby programmer. Uh, as I said, I was working with Node and Python. And yeah, the learning curve is, isn't like very heavy. Uh, I think the, the most difficult thing that I, I, I see is the, to learn to use well Rails. Because Rails have a lot of commands and things but made, made the life very, very easy. Uh, so I think it's, it's a very cool uh, programming uh, language. So finally, to say goodbye and thank you to everyone. This is us. Uh, this is our, um, you can see below our GitHub uh, handlers and our uh, names on the presentation. And as you know, WiseLine is always hiring. We are growing as crazy. Uh, there's a bunch of different roles open for everyone to apply. Uh, we are looking for Ruby on Rails engineers, iOS, etc., etc., etc. So join us, apply. And I don't know if uh, any of the Marielles have any message to share. No, thank you so much. And I think the important message is that, that we are a culture that contributes. We are a culture that um, we believe in doing well while doing good and doing good while doing well. So re really, um, you will find a community here. You will find uh, colleagues that will help you with all, 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 all they know. All, they will try to share the knowledge. And I think one of the things that really attract me to Westline is that we are a continuous learning culture. We are a sharing knowledge culture. And I think uh, that's the best line for any success in the business, right? The community and feel that you belong to a fun place and you can grow uh, while working and you can have fun while working. So we are that. So join us guys, we are awesome, we are so cool. I just met uh, Mar, Omar, and German, and German, so we are just like that. <laughs> Hopefully, we are just like that because they are really rock stars. So thank you, thank you for coming. I'm really excited that we had that. So what do you think, Mariel? Thank you all for coming too. Uh, I agree with, with Mariel Maitokaya and uh, we will be sending you an email with everything that we saw today with the presentation, with some useful links. And with a feedback form for us, it's really important to keep getting better at these webinars. So please fill out the feedback form and we will be reaching out for you guys soon. 
Thank you so much. And if anyone has wants to say anything else from the lecturers, if not, we are set to go. Thank you, everyone. Mar, Germán, Omar, you're awesome. Rockstars, it was really cool. Thank you so much. I learned, I learned, I learned a lot today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone.